Hello, my name is Philippe Girard, a professor in the history department at McNeese State University. And I'm Rebecca Harris, a local teacher and actress, and welcome to Your Grandma Rocks, where we explore the lives of famous women in history. Welcome and bienvenue à nos amis francophones. Vous écoutez la radio de l'Université McNeese. On the program today, music and history as we retrace the life of a remarkable woman. She was a scientist who co-invented an early version of frequency hopping spread spectrum communication. Okay, got it. She was some ugly science nerd with big rim glasses. Actually, she was known in her time as, quote, the world's most beautiful woman, unquote. Well, I stand corrected. So much for stereotypes about women in sciences. But she's mostly known for something else altogether. And what was that? She was the first actress to portray a female orgasm on screen in the uh, cinema. Uh-oh. Now might be the time to warn our listeners that today's show is not intended for young ears. Along the way, we'll sample a few songs. What's first on your list? Hey There, The Line Line by The Plain White Tees. Nice song, but what's the connection with today's hot topic? Well, Hedy Lamar was an actress, and one of her most memorable roles was playing the uh, hairdresser in a 1949 epic, Samson and Delilah. So here we go. Hey there, Delilah. Hey there, Delilah, what's it like in New York City? I'm a thousand miles away, but girl, tonight you look so pretty. Yes, you do. Times Square can shine as bright as you. I swear it's true Hey there Delilah, don't you worry about the distance I'm right there if you get lonely Give this song another listen Close your eyes Listen to my voice, it's my disguise I'm by your side Oh, it's what you do to me Times are getting hard, but just believe me, girl, someday I'll pay the bills with this guitar. We'll have it good. We'll have the life we knew we would. My word is good. Hey there, Delilah, I've got so much left to say. If every simple song I wrote to you would take your breath away, I'd write it all. Even more in love with me, you'd fall, we'd have it all. Seems pretty far, but they've got planes and trains and cars I'd walk to you if I had no other way Our friends would all make fun of us And we'll just laugh along Because we know that none of them have felt this way Delilah, I can promise you That by the time we get through The world will never ever be the same Bonjour à tous and welcome back to Your Grammar Rocks. Je m'appelle Philippe Girard. And I'm Rebecca Harris. And today we're exploring the life of an actress and scientist named Hedy Lamar. Remind us, where was she from? Austria. Though for a while during World War II, she was effectively stateless. She eventually got U.S. citizenship. An Austrian-American then. The female Arnold Schwarzenegger. Let's start with her youth. What was it like? Well, for one thing, she began with a different name. Hedy Lamar was born Hedwig Eva Maria Kiesler in Vienna, Austria in 1914. And what did her parents do? The dad was a banker. The mom was a pianist. Both were of Jewish ancestry, but young Hedy, she was raised as a Catholic. You said earlier she is credited with an important scientific discovery. So... How did she get interested in science? Apparently through her dad. He would take her on long walks and point at things and explain how they worked. Intellectual curiosity, the number one quality for scientists. What about her second love, acting? Who did she get that from? Well, presumably from her mom. She was a pianist. Young Hedy studied the piano, as well as ballet, and she won a beauty contest at age 12, and she was fascinated by the world of the theater. 
As a lover of theater myself, I can relate. I also did ballet. And I'm sure you won a bunch of beauty contests, honey boo boo. <laughs> But back to Hedy Lamar. When did her acting career begin? At age 16, when she got a job as a script girl in Vienna. Meaning the person who's in charge of keeping an eye on what goes on during filming to catch any continuity error. The term script girl sounds a bit dismissive. I think that today the term continuity supervisor. It is preferred, yes. At any rate, that's how Eddie Lamar began her career in cinema. But that's on the production side. How did she transition into acting? Well, she began working as an extra. Another term that's fallen out of use. Now they're called background actors. It sounds fancier. Well, either way, she was so beautiful that they gave her some small speaking roles where she did well. And so her career took off. Good for her. What kind of movies did she do? Well, a bunch of early 1930s German movies that are kind of forgotten today, but she did play alongside Peter Lohre, a name that film buffs will recognize. Earlier, you mentioned that she's most known for a notorious orgasm scene. You need to cover that movie at least. Uh, we'll cover that movie, which is called Ecstasy, but after our next musical break. Oh, you're such a tease. What's our next song? I think I found the perfect song. It's by a German electronic music DJ named ATB, and that song is called Ecstasy. Welcome back, I'm Rebecca Harris. Et je suis Philippe Girin, vous écoutez la radio de l'Université McNeese. And today we're exploring the life of Hedy Lamarr, an Austrian-American who's famous for two things. She was an actress and a scientist. So far we covered her upbringing in Vienna and her early acting career. Now is the time to study the movie that made her famous, or infamous. The movie is called Ecstasy. I hate to use that word, but when was that movie released? 1933. Okay, it's a German movie, right? Well, technically Czech. The director was Czech and a lot of the shooting took place in Prague, in Czechoslovakia. But the film was also shot in German and in French, so it was an international production. What do you mean, three languages? You mean it was dubbed after the fact? Well, the same scenes were actually shot multiple times in different languages. I guess that's the first hint that our lady today was not just a pretty head, but also a big brain. She was. She actually helped translate the script from German to French. What about the script itself? What's the story? Well, it's about a young woman. Played by Hedy Lamarr, I assume. Yeah, she was just 18 at the time. In the movie, she's married to a husband who is super rich, but also super old. So, no passion there? Oh no, no passion, and especially no physical passion, if you know what I mean. So she ditches the old guy for a much younger and much more physically adept man who can satisfy her needs. You really tiptoed around the issue. So basically, he's old and impotent. How did the director get the point across in a way that's tasteful? Well, when the new couple gets home on their wedding night, the old husband has a hard time getting the key in the front door. Oh, wink, wink. Got it. Then he tries to remove her pearl necklace. White pearls being a symbol of virginity in Western art. Yes, and he can't do that either. In fact, he injures his finger on the clasp of the necklace. An injured finger, huh? Another winking reference. Yeah, so she ditches the old guy for a younger and more potent man who can make her happy. Hence the title, Ecstasy. Wow, that's a pretty racy plot. I always thought that old movies were tamer than that. Not all of them. Early U.S. movies were known to push boundaries. It was only in the late 20s and the early 30s that Hollywood really cleaned up its act. You're talking about the Hays Code. 
the one that set rules on what you could and couldn't show on screen, like adultery. Yes, but the American Hays Code that would not have applied to a Czech movie. Anyway. So what was racy about that movie? Besides the whole premise about a sexually frustrated wife ditching her impotent husband. Well, they're all nude scenes to begin with. Of Hedy Lamar, I assume. Yep, there's a scene where she goes swimming in the nude. What was it like for her to shoot nude scenes? You said she was just 18 at the time. Well, there's actually some controversy there. The scenes were supposed to be shot from a distance so that viewers could not see too much of her body. But without telling her, the director used telephoto lenses when filming. So the movie actually had close-ups of her naked. You'd think he would have asked for her consent before shooting nude scenes. That seems like a pretty personal choice to make. Well, that was not always the norm in cinema. I recently taped a show about Maria Schneider, who was in the movie Last Tango in Paris with Marlon Brando in the 70s. There's a notorious scene featuring anal rape, and the actress was just 18 at the time. She wasn't told about that until the day that the scene was shot. That's problematic to say the least. But back to Hedy Lamar. Tell us about that famous orgasm scene. Well, you know how the movie Jaunt is scary because the animatronic shock wasn't working, so Steven Spielberg barely showed the shock at all. I know what you mean. The less you show, the scarier. Extensi is like that. Aside from a shot of Hedy Lamar's bare legs, the sex scene has no nudity. Both lovers are fully dressed. Most of the shots are close-ups of her face with cuts to various objects that give you a clue as to what goes on. So very little skin and yet very erotic. I'm confused. How are they supposed to have sex if they're both fully dressed? And why do we only see her face in the close-ups? Not to get too technical here, but you'd think that the man would show up in the frame at some point. Well, watching the scene, it is strongly suggested that we're not talking about straight missionary sex, but cunilingus, which is why we only see her face, not his. He's otherwise occupied. Uh-oh. What about those other clues you mentioned? Well, remember the pearl necklace that her husband couldn't get off on wedding night? Yes. Well, there are various shots of her holding the necklace in her hands. Clutch my pearls! And then letting it Again, pearls being a symbol of virginity. And then there are several cuts to the petrol lamp above the bed. Fire equaling passion. I get it. And then when all is said and done, she scratches a match and lights a cigarette. Smoking after sex. Got it. And last but not least, there are numerous close-ups of her face in the throes of ecstasy. That is the title of the movie, after all. How did they shoot this? I assume she wasn't actually having a climax on set. Oh no, that's all method acting. Supposedly she used a little pin to prick herself during filming, and that's why you see her rocking her head back and forth and pinching her lips. So, the orgasm was fake. I hate it when a woman utters those words in front of me, but yeah. Reminds me of Meg Ryan in the movie, When Harry Met Sally, another classic scene. So how was the movie received? It was a major scandal at the time. In Germany, the movie was not released until 1935, and only after extensive cuts were made. The nude scene and the orgasm scene, I assume. Right. And in Italy, the Catholic Church managed to stop the movie's release altogether. And what about the U.S.? By this point, the Hays Code would have been in effect. Well, the movie only saw limited release in the U.S., yeah. And that appeared with its big cuts in some theaters, but in some states it was banned altogether. How could the movie make sense if a bunch of scenes were taken out? Well, the director had anticipated that. He knew that the movie was going to be controversial. So not only did he film French, German, and Czech versions, but he also shot alternate versions of some key scenes in case they would be censored. So for example, he shot an additional scene where Hedy Lamar divorced her whole husband before having sex with a young man. This way, the plot would be less immoral. She would be divorced, not cheating on her husband. It's fascinating, but we need to take another music break. Well, clutch your pearls, because it's time for Black by Pearl Jam. Yeah. 
Bonjour à tous and welcome back to Your Grandma Rocks on Kibi Wayans. Je suis Philippe Pirin. And I'm Rebecca Harris. Today we're covering the life of Hedy Lamarr, an Austrian born actress who portrayed the first female orgasm scene on screen. That was in 1933. You said she had a Jewish background. Did that create a problem for her? By the 1930s, life started getting very difficult for Jews in Central Europe. Well, technically, she had converted to Catholicism, but under Adolf Hitler's racial series, that did not matter much, no. So what did she do? Well, initially, she stayed put. She had a big acting career in Europe. And intriguingly enough, her first husband, Friedrich Mandel, he was a hardcore fascist. A fascist? Why would a man like him marry a Jew? That shows you how intriguing she must have been as a woman. Actually, the main problem for him was not even her Jewish ancestry. He was mostly bothered by his wife's notorious sex scenes in that movie, Ecstasy. So he spent hundreds of thousands of dollars trying to buy back every print of the movie so that he could destroy them. And thankfully for us, some copies survived. Still, a marriage between a Jewish woman and a Nazi didn't end well, I assume. Oh no, he was very controlling and domineering. He refused to let her pursue her acting career, and in fact, he ended up locking her up in his house. Gee, a Nazi husband who acts like a Nazi. Who would have thought, right? Right. Well, in the end, she ran away from her husband in 1937, not just from her marriage, actually, but from Germany as well. That's how she ended up in the U.S. then? Yep. And on her way to the U.S., she was on an ocean liner when she bumped into Louis B. Mayer. The M from MGM, right? Right. And he offered her a contract on the spot for $125 a week in Hollywood. How convenient. She hadn't even landed in the U.S. and she already had a job. What did she say? No. No? Well, more precisely, no, I want $500 a week. And she got it. Wow. I'll try that tactic with the Calcasieu Parish School Board next time. What about her second film career in the U.S.? Well, first she ditched her German name, Edwig Kiesler, and that's when she became known as Hedy Lamar. But... She still had a foreign accent, so she was usually cast as the exotic, sultry love interest. No big surprise. She was the most beautiful woman in the world. She was. The male undergrads at Columbia, they voted her the girl who's whom, quote, they would most like to be marooned on a desert island with. Every man in America fetishized about her. Any movie from that period that we might know? Well, she appeared alongside all the big stars of the 30s and 40s, like Jimmy Stewart and Clark Gable and Spencer Tracy. Her biggest role was probably as Delilah in that movie I mentioned before, uh, the epic Samson and Delilah, where she wore a very sexy, tight-fitting robe made of peacock feathers. Think of Princess Leia in Return of the Jedi. So a big foreign star and a sex symbol, like Greta Garbo or Marlene Dietrich. Well, almost. Uh, she was not quite as talented as the other two, at least in the English language. Uh, here is a 1939 review that I found in the New York Times about one movie where Hedy Lamont actually had to open her mouth. Quote, it is necessary to report that she is essentially one of those museum pieces, like the Mona Lisa, who were more beautiful in repose. Ouch, that's mean. What about her private life? Well, I already told you about her first husband. The Nazi. Right. Then in 1939, she met a movie producer called Jean Markey and the eloped within a month. A year later, she asked for divorce, telling the judge that, as it turned out, they were not suited for one another. Well, maybe she should have dated him for more than a month before getting married. Well, that's exactly what the judge told her, pretty much word for word. All in all, she had six husbands. And how many divorces? Six. Okay, maybe not the most successful private life then. But I want us to save some time to talk about her other career as a scientist. We'll get there next, but first a musical break, and I mean a musical break. Our next song is from Sound of Music. That movie is set in Austria, so it fits today's theme. There's even a love story with a Nazi. That's the duet we'll listen to. Here is 16 going on 17. Great song, as long as you don't listen to the sexist lyrics. You wait, little girl, on an empty stage For fate to turn the light on your life, little girl, is an empty page that men will want to write on. To write on. You are 16, going on 17. Baby, it's time to think. Better beware, be canny and careful. Baby, you're on the brink. You are 16, going on 17. Fellows will fall in line. He 
Mika, young lads and roues and cats will offer you food and wine. Totally unprepared are you to face a world of men. Timid and shy and scared are you. Telling you what to do I am 17 Going on 18 I'll take care of you You're listening to Your Grandma Rocks on KBYS. I'm Rebecca Harris. Et je suis Philippe Girard. And today we're retracing the life of Hedy Lamarr, an Austrian-born actress who had a successful career in Europe and Hollywood from 1930s to the 1950s, but she was also a noted scientist. How did she get into that second career? Well, the story that she overheard her first husband. The Nazi. Yeah, he was also a weapons manufacturer, as Nazis are prone to do. So anyway, she overheard him one day saying that the Nazis were trying to find some new way to control their torpedoes with a new kind of radio device that would avoid radio jamming. So years later, at a party in Hollywood, she mentioned that story to another guest. The year was... 1939. So by that point, the U.S. was getting close to a war with Germany. That was valuable information right there. Yeah, so she and that party guest, they got to work on a new radio system to send information to a missile or a torpedo And by using multiple radio signals on various wavelengths, an enemy couldn't mess with the radio signals and jam them. We saw a while back that she had been fascinated with science as a little girl. Great to see that she went back to her old love just in time for World War II. She did. In 1942, the two of them filed a patent for their invention. Did the device work? Well, you don't have to prove that your idea works for a patent. You only have to explain how it's supposed to work. And then engineers can get to work on an actual prototype. So she helped the U.S. make better torpedoes during World War II. Good for her. Well, actually, no. A lot of engineers thought her idea would not work. You mean, why would a pretty Hollywood actress know anything about science? Right, so they never built the prototype. At least until the 1960s, when the U.S. military finally got around to trying her idea, and it worked. Her invention was later used to develop Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, so you may be using it on your cell phone without knowing it. Wow. Did she get some recognition at least? Well, belatedly. She finally got an award by an engineering society in 1996. And I will quote from her acceptance speech, quote, It's about time, unquote. (laughs) Funny. Did she at least make money off her patent? Not a dime. By the time the U.S. military finally used her idea, the patent had expired. She deserved better. But time for our last song. What do you have in store? Well, in 2017, Hedy Lamar was the subject of a biopic called Bombshell. So I figured we should listen to an excerpt from the soundtrack of that movie. It is called She by Alice Phoebe Lou. She, 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 she cut a hole in the fence and she ran. Troublesome prison behind She didn't want to feel the fire She didn't want to lose her desire She, 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 
Bienvenue à tous, je m'appelle Philippe Girard. And I'm Rebecca Harris. Today we're retraced the life of Hedy Lamarr, an actress best known for an orgasm scene in the 1933 movie Ecstasy, and for helping develop a new radio system for torpedoes, and ultimately, Bluetooth. Walk us through the end of her life, please. Uh, you already mentioned that her domestic life was a bit of a mess. Six marriages and six divorces. Yeah, she was also estranged from one of her kids. And she had a reputation for being a bit difficult on set. What do you expect? She was a Hollywood diva. Also, she had a bad habit of suing people. And she was also sued a number of times for shoplifting. Uh, one case was in Florida in 1991 for $21 worth of goods. $21? Why would she break the law for so little money? Didn't she make a bunch of money as an actress? She did, and then she spent it all. By the end of her life, she was living off a tiny pension. She was also almost blind by that point, and she lived in seclusion all alone in her tiny place in Florida. What a weird end. Former Hollywood star and scientist who's now living as a hermit? It's like that other movie, Sunset Boulevard. Is she still alive? I know. She passed away in 2000. Too bad. I would love to have met her. She sounds like a fascinating person, but we'll have to leave it here. What a life. We're glad we could share it with you. Quelle vie incroyable, en effet.